Welcome back to my kitchen. The last time we were here, I shared with you my recipe for fanuropita. Because so many of you asked that I offer yet another cooking segment, and since Great Lent will be beginning in a few days on Clean Monday or Catara de Fera, I thought it would be appropriate to share with you how to make lagana. Before we begin, I'm going to put on my apron, which was given to me by a wonderful parish in Sioux City, Iowa, Holy Trinity. It's my favorite apron, which says, when life gives you lemons, make agua lemono. Maybe next time we'll try that too. So, although lagana is not a religious food, if you will, lagana is simply Greek flatbread that is traditionally eaten only once a year on Clean Monday the first day of Lent in the Greek Orthodox tradition. Most appropriately, since Great Lent is a time for more intensified prayer and fasting, Lagana is made without oil and never any dairy products. Also, sesame seeds are the most common topping, either black or white sesame seeds, or even a combination of the two for added color. I like to go with simple, plain white sesame seeds, but we'll see what happens. So let's begin. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Last time, I caught grief from viewers for not sharing emphatically to preheat your oven. So please, preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Bake, 400, and set it. There we go. Then our ingredients, which will make one loaf of lagana, we will need four cups of all-purpose flour, one and a half a teaspoon of yeast, one teaspoon of sugar, one and two-thirds cups warm water, not too hot, a half a teaspoon of salt. Now, ordinarily, if it wasn't Lent, you would add one tablespoon of olive oil, but we're gonna omit that and add a quarter cup of water if needed. Traditionally, oil is not used during Lent. An additional up to half cup of flour for kneading. A half a cup of sesame seeds, white or black or a combination of both. For bread wash, we need one tablespoon of honey and five tablespoons of boiling water. So let's begin. We need one teaspoon of sugar. I'm going to add that to our bowl. one and two-thirds cup of warm water. Now, it's important that the water is not too hot or else you'll burn the yeast. And what I like to do, after we dissolve the sugar in the water, a little trick my mother taught me. Hi, Ma. Put your pinky in. If you could hold it for 10 seconds, it's warm enough. There you go. Then you're going to slowly Combine your active yeast. I like to use the dry yeast in the packet, and this is important that you do it slowly. So you just slowly sprinkle the yeast on top of the water. Do not just dump it in there, but slowly sprinkle it to cover all the water, like that. Now we're gonna let the sugar and the water and the yeast do its magic. It's going to what we call proof. Small bubbles will form on the surface when the yeast is activated. So now it's starting to combine and I like to just gently stir it so that we can combine everything, but gently, not a vigorous stir, not like you're beating eggs, but just gently so it, so it combines. And we're gonna let that sit for about 10 minutes and we'll come back to it and I'll show you how the proofing happens and how the bubbles are formed. Let's put that aside. Next, we're going to take three and a half to four cups of flour for one loaf. I say three and a half to four because depending on the water, the consistency, it might get too sticky, it might get too dry, so you got to feel it, you got to play with it a little bit. This is actually four cups, so we're going to put all four cups into a bowl. So now we're going to add the salt 
to the flour mixture, we need half a teaspoon of salt. And if you go a little over, it's okay, but just don't put too much. So half a teaspoon of salt, and we're going to shake it over the top. I did forget to mention that if the water and the yeast doesn't bubble, it means that your yeast is old and dead, so I wouldn't use it because it won't rise and you'll wind up with having bricks instead of a lagana. But our, our yeast is doing rather well and the bubbles are happening. And we could see that here if you have a look. So now that we've added the salt and the, and the flour and we've added the yeast to our water, we still need about three to five minutes for it to finish proofing. And then we'll add the yeast and the water to the flour and salt mixture in about three more minutes. Once the yeast has proofed, you're going to mix it well with the flour and salt until you have a sticky dough. Slowly pour it in. And we're going to mix it with a spatula first or a wooden spoon or whatever you have. Now if it's not sticky enough, like this isn't, we're going to add a little bit of water, warm water, a little bit at a time. Usually you can make this with three and a half cups of flour. I chose four so we can add water instead of adding more flour. You're going to flour a surface that's been obviously cleaned and washed a little bit so the dough won't stick too much to the counter. And then you turn out the dough onto the table, onto your surface, and now we'll begin kneading the dough. You probably need to add water to this mixture, but we'll see in a little bit how it holds up as we continue to knead. And you're going to knead this dough for 10 minutes. Some people would use a KitchenAid or any other kind of a mix master to do it. I don't have one and this is an old-fashioned way and I prefer doing it this way anyhow. You get your hands in there and you can feel it. Now notice it's sticking to my hands so you need to rub it off. And what you can do then is add flour that you have handy. And your hands will become less sticky. But a good 10 minute kneading is necessary. So through the magic of this filming process and editing, we have kneaded the dough for 10 minutes. And now you can see it held together in a small ball. And then I like to transfer it, the kneaded dough to a large clean bowl that we're going to dust with flour so it won't stick. Place it in the bowl. And then we're going to cover it with a clean towel, preferably a white terry cloth towel. You can also cover it with saran wrap or cellophane paper and put it off to the side. Don't disturb it, don't look at it, don't touch it. Make sure there's no draft, but it's in a warm place in your house for an hour and a half for the dough to rise. So an hour and a half has passed and it's important that you give enough time for the dough to rise. And as you can see, our dough has doubled in size. Now to test if it's fully risen, you gently poke your finger into the dough. Perfect, it didn't bounce back. If it bounced back immediately, it means it needs more time to rise. But since it didn't bounce back, it's ready to be kneaded a second time. So we're just going to knead the dough and deflate it just a little bit, a couple of minutes, not too long. Put it to the side, take your pan, no oil, and just give a little dusting of flour. 
because we don't want it to stick in the baking process. There we go. Helps if you have big hands too, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, let me take it out. And now we're going to just shape it a little bit, give it a little shape. And we place it in the middle of the pan, and now we're going to spread out the dough. I like to turn it over, spread it out some more. This is how a Lejana traditionally looks. It will rise a little bit while we're cooking it. So pat it into the rectangle so it's gently deflated. Pull it apart. There. And now we're going to cover it one more time and give it a half hour to rest and to rise. Let's put that off to the side. Oop. There you go. So while that's rising a second time or resting, covered, don't disturb it again. We're going to make our bread wash. So for the bread wash, all you need is one tablespoon of honey and five tablespoons of boiling water. One, two, three, four, five. If you don't have honey, you could always use apricot jam, but I prefer honey, especially good Greek honey. And this one happens to come from olivegrovemarket.com. We have one tablespoon of honey dissolved in the water. Stir it up, make sure it's dissolved well. You can see it. A nice honey bread wash. And once we brush this onto the lagana before we bake it, our sesame seeds will stick to it. We'll come back in about a half hour and we'll continue the process. Okay, now that about a half hour has passed, we're going to continue with our lagada. Now here's the fun part actually, an authentic last touch. Once your dough is shaped and has rested for a half hour, you're going to press your fingers into the dough all along the surface, but be careful not to poke through the dough. And if you have any children in the house, have them pitch in to help here because it's it's kind of fun and it gives them something to do as well. So you're going to take your fingers and just poke little holes like that. Not all the way down. Now we're going to take our bread wash and with a brush lightly coat the top of the lagana. So paint on your bread wash. This will help the sesame seeds stick. It'll give some color. As I said in the beginning, I like white sesame seeds only, but some people like black only and some people like a mixture. So to make everyone happy on today's broadcast, I'm going to combine black and white so we don't have anybody telling me what's more authentic and what isn't. It's really up to you. So we have a nice even bread wash. It'll also give it a little, a little darker color after it's baked. Okay, there we go. Put that aside. Here we have white sesame seeds and black sesame seeds. You start with just take a few of the white ones and sprinkle them along. Really up to you how much you put on. I said a half a cup in the beginning, but I never quite use a half a cup. And take some of the black. 
does give it a nice color. The other great thing about making Lagana at home, your house smells amazing. And that's what it will look like when we put it into the oven, which has been preheated to 400 degrees. And we pop it in the oven right now for about 25 to 30 minutes. You should check on it, depending on how hot or cool your oven gets. But let's put it in the oven now. I've set the oven at 400 degrees and we're gonna put it in there for about 30 minutes. We'll check it at 25 minutes to see how done it is. Now that 25 minutes have passed and we were able to remove the baked Lagana from the oven, here it is. And we've let it rest out of the pan for about five minutes before we slice it. On Clean Monday, or Catra Leftera, it's traditional to tear and not slice your loaf of Lagana. Some say to avoid bad luck. The rest of the year, if you make it any other time, one can regularly slice the baked Lagana loaves in strips and enjoy with topped with uh, scordalia or uh, dara musalata. But as a perfect side to uh, Lagana, is dipping it in olive oil. A good Greek olive oil, like this one, which I was able to get from olivegrovemarket.com. It's wonderful quality olive oil. Just pour a little bit into the bowl. You could also enjoy it with a bowl of lentil soup, a nice glass of wine. Remember, Saturday and Sundays, wine and oil is allowed. So we're going to just taste what smells magnificent in this house. You'll take the Lagana and we'll just tear it apart. Perfectly baked. Still warm from the oven. Mm. Mm. It's wonderful. Thank you for joining. Have a great Lent. Caris Aracosti, Caliorexi, and thank you once again.